morning, really. <laughs> Why you got to flip me off every morning, Tyler? Look, <laughs> it's what you it's do. It's just what we do. We just have a good time at work. <laughs> we do. And look, there's Tristan. Do you have like goo in your shoe after that trash? Oh, a little bit. Trash yeah. was juicy. It's awesome. Yeah, breaking that a little bit more. Why not? Let's do. Yeah, uh, let's do a workshop update. Good morning, everybody. Jen Crevasi, Jekyll Bates, and Bullshad Studios, and this is your workshop update. I've got a lot to go over with you guys. It's been a minute since we've had a chance to sit and talk. I've done a couple of spray sessions since I've been back from Texas. I've been transferring a bunch of files over from Jekyll Bates to the Bullshad channel, and we're going to get you up to date through the coming weeks on all of that stuff, but I just haven't had a chance to like catch up with you guys, so... The last couple of weeks I've been back from Texas, it has been Texas hot in Georgia. And when I say hot, Lord have mercy. We've had triple digit temperatures. We've had rainforest type humidity, um, lots of thunderstorms, just, just a typical hot middle America summer. It's, it's the South y'all. Um, but I spent about a week in Texas, probably closer to like seven or eight days down for Carl's Fishing Outdoors, which is located in Fort Worth, Texas. It is their very first store in the flesh. And I was super, super stoked to be a part of that. Did some great big fish replicas. Uh, you guys are rolling through the footage with me now. I'm going to show you a, a little bit about all of that and just had a blast with the folks at Catch Co. Just a real good time. Got to hang out with Carl. Got to hang out with LFG. Got to hang out with Fishing People waited with over an and hour Agpac just to check out, cool and guys. nobody left. Just, hey guys. Yes. And we got to talk about fish and tackle and custom lures and all the things that I like to talk about. And um, I don't know if any of you guys know this. If you've been watching LFG's channel for a long time, then you know that he used to dabble with airbrushing when he was in college at Texas A&M. So he was an angler, um, did the tournament circuit for a while, and then became the famous YouTuber that you guys all know and love. So hats off to Justin Rackley. It was, uh, it was an honor to meet you and fishing with Norman Yak Pack and all those guys. Tej Sofer, um, Vince Lasardio, um, all of those guys just had Ross was down there. Ross Gordon was down there. I get to see a bunch of those at iCast coming up in a couple of weeks, and I cannot believe it's already July 6th. So iCast is coming up. I'm going to do a full, um, just a lot of filming this year. I didn't get a chance to do that last year, but I know a lot of you guys see some of the, um, some of the stuff that comes out of iCast, but I want to kind of give you a, a BTS look at uh, the way we go to these places and what we would look for from a business perspective, from, from a person that paints custom lures. I want you guys to see that aspect of of why we go to iCast because as many of you may not know iCast is not a sellable functioning event it is a showcase for everything that's new that companies are putting out and what's fresh in the industry and some of the most new innovative products that are, are being put out so just a lot of good information for you guys um, and I'm going to bring as much of that back this year with me as I can. Um, going down with Mike and Cody Kirk, who is local to the area, and a hammer. He is one of our pro staff and a really good friend of the Bullshed family. So couldn't be happier. We're going to miss Tyler and Jess, but I might be the first to announce this on YouTube. But uh, General Manager Tyler and Jess are expecting. So we are going to have a baby bull um, of the of the human kind uh, in a few months, so we're pretty stoked about that as well. So, let's give uh, let's give Tyler and Jess a round of applause and wish them the best. Uh, I know that Tyler and, and Jess are both burning the candle at both ends right now, and uh, we we couldn't be happier. We're over the moon for this new little bowl to arrive. So, lots going on in the Bullshad family. Lots going on with Jekyll Bates. Let's get into this aspect of it. So I've been getting a lot of questions on how I do this type of a deal. Um, these are a little bit easier to do in a spray session for you guys. And I know I've done some peacock bass before, probably two now if I go back and look at them. But you guys love to see this kind of stuff. So I've gotten some overwhelming response for, can you please do a start to finish? And I believe it was on this. I did a... 
a YouTube short and a detailing video on um, Instagram on a reel on how I did the detail and it's just basically with a fine artist brush some of you guys were asking questions about what kind of brush I use if I'm in your right speaker and the camera shaking it's because I'm trying to stretch to reach this little guy so this is if I can get the camera to focus this is a 2-0 I use a double zero um, this is even a little bit finer of a point if you guys can see that so I do a lot of my fine detailing with that it's the same paint that I use to spray through an airbrush um, I use the water-based for detail so this is a wicked detail yellow opaque and I want it to be a little bit brighter than whatever I'm putting on there underneath so the highlights and the details have to be a little bit brighter because when you see peacocks and they have that outline it's it's a different shade of yellow so this is the baby bull shad in a peacock mass this is that duo blank in a 120 and um, I was talking to Kelly Barefoot from Catch Outdoors, not Catch Company, but a just as cool company that deals with uh, the Danny Joe's worms. Um, he's done quite a bit of collaboration with Mike over the years and also a good friend of the Bullshad family. And he was like, you know, there's just so many different ways to do a peacock and so many color schemes. There's just such variation in them. And there is, it's really one of my favorite fish and cichlids to paint. So you're seeing quite a few of those. And then we're going, we're gonna jump from the peacock over to a perch. Now, a lot of you guys definitely wanna see this as well. And again, it's, it's the same kind of scheme as I've been doing from building from the underside out. Um, you basically start with a primer on this, which is usually flat gray. It's a self etching primer. And then what that does is, is promotes adhesion because a lot of times with resin baits, they kind of, it's almost like static, the or, you know, magnetic opposites. They do not want to adhere paint to their surfaces. So you need something that's a little bit help. So once you scuff them down and apply that self etching primer, which is that flat gray, you go ahead and put a white base on. And then you do your undertones, usually black or a detailed black magenta or a dark gray and then build your colors out from that. So as you can see, everything that fades into the background in here, that's all done before I ever put yellow on this bait. So you're just building from the inside out. It's the way I like to portray it. This is going up to Brian in the northeastern part of the country. It's a big perch guy and it's a great forage fish. And obviously this is on a dredger. And these dredgers are picking up momentum. You guys are finally figuring out that this is a fantastic bait. Um, it's a fairly new bait to Bullshad. We've been making them for a little bit less than a year. We introduced them last year at the gathering. And the dredger 7, which is this bait, and then the dredger 10, which is uh, a, another bait. So this is going to go, so, I'm sorry, the dredger 8, so 18 is what we call it for depth so the seven to ten feet realm is this one and it's a seven inch hd with that real long bill on it and then we have a larger version which goes 220 but we consistently can get it down to like 18 feet so mike has aptly named that the dredger 18 and they are a little bit niche as far as when you would use them obviously you're using these deep and the whole gist of this is to use this type of bait with like a pan optics or a live target, something that's gonna allow you to see, you know, in your view, this bait dropping down. And you would drop this down just like any other deep dive and crank bait. You wanna crank, crank, crank fast as you can to get it down to that desired depth. And then you're gonna move it along that water column and it will stay down for you. Now you can, Add a little weight if you want to. That has a tendency because there are tuning chambers in here that you can see. It has a tendency to make it a little bit head heavy, but you want that to dive down. So just wanted to give you a little tutorial on that as well. And then we've got some other stuff that's going out. It's going out to Mickey. Real nice summer gill. Love the colors on gills. Gills are my favorite. You know, a lot of what I did 
People are like, oh, did you go to Lake Fork when you were in Texas? No. I went to canals and riverways and, and anything that had some current in it specifically targeting bluegill so I can photograph them so that I can paint them. Um, that's a big thing with me. I love big bass and I cannot lie, but these bluegill patterns, that and stuff like this, that's where I make my bread and butter because I love those patterns. I just absolutely love a good gill pattern. So as you can see, there's some, if I can get a little bit closer in this, you can see where the underside of this is all blue. So you do the blue and the yellow, like I showed you on Instagram the other day, and then build your other colors over top of that. And that's how this turns out. Super happy with how this turned out. Then I've got some color shift paint. We've talked about that before as well. As a matter of fact, I think I talked about it in my last spray session, which was this. The other thing that is up and coming and happening and released at Bullshad and Ketchco is the next collaboration. It is a saltwater crossover bait. And I say crossover because absolutely you can fish and I've, I've even done it. There's a lot of saltwater baits out there that are 100% freshwater fishable. But this can do both specifically if no other reason is because the gears and these swivels are saltwater grade. The hooks are saltwater grade. That's why you see this plated silverish color and not the black nickel that you would find on most freshwater baits. And that's because saltwater is so corrosive. Inshore brackish, all that stuff, super corrosive. So your hooks have to be a standard that will keep from corroding as quickly. Not saying they won't, but if you take care of the baits, the baits are gonna take care of you. Uh, make sure that you don't put them in a bag or in, in your tackle box wet. You know, that's a big thing. If you're new to angling and you're going to go, you know, the Chesapeake Bay or down to the ocean or the Gulf and do some inshore fishing, make sure that you properly dry as, and freshwater rinse also. Throw these in the sink when you get back if you're on vacation in your RV or at the hotel, wherever you're staying, camping, find some fresh water source, rinse these baits off. And that'll get rid of a lot of the corrosive salt. The other thing that I'm super, super excited about is that you can see me turning this. They're doing the same thing at Ketchco with these saltwater baits as Mike does with his herring in real life. And you can turn these swivels all the way around. You see how I'm just holding onto this swivel. Completely functional. And this is a big reason why the hookup ratios are vastly improved on swim baits and things like this. Um, you can see that he does this in his regular baits. It's a great function. He makes a lot of his resin swim baits like this. This is going up to uh, Ernesto Devis. Pretty stoked about that. But this is my interpretation of a snook, juvenile snook. You can see the picture right now. So we got that going on. You guys just finished. And if you haven't seen that spray session and you want to learn how I painted the snook, you're more than welcome to. It's a fun fish. And this also employs some of that underside out mentality when you're painting you get your base layers and then you get your shadowing. And in this case, the scaling, which was done in black. And then you build out from that. So you can still see those scales. They look a little bit more natural because they're in the background, but they're still there. So that's just a little food for thought and trick on how I do that stuff. And I know you guys can see the rest of this stuff. We're gonna go over that here right now. I did some pretty cool stuff for 4th of July. These are getting shipped. They're ready to go. That beautiful KBS finish on them. Man, you just can't beat it. Cannot beat it. So super excited to get this stuff out the door today and tomorrow we'll be shipping this week. Um, I did take a couple days off to be with the family. I don't know if you guys know, but my mom is now in Georgia, uh, moved down from the Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Virginia area. And she, we found her home down here and she is closer to me, which I love. So I spent the holiday with her. I have not really spent a holiday and I travel a lot for, for work now. Um, so I haven't had the chance to spend a whole lot of time with her. So I was super happy to have her over. Uh, we grilled out. We had some fun, watched some movies. And uh, these are coming to you guys soon, this week. 
so usually when I do drops like this they ship out within the week humidity um, does play a part in how these things cure so I just want to isn't that cool like this is like some of the most fun patterns that I've done for 4th of July thus far um, so yeah so that plays a that plays a role in how quickly they get to you guys because I have to make sure they're super cured before you guys drop them in the water this these little fat heads man I love them I absolutely love them uh, there's a little bit of that shine on this and this is that summer Tennessee shad just a very clean good solid pattern sometimes simple is better then we've got some other stuff going out the door i got a bunch of these cobra koi you guys have really picked up the pace on ordering these it's a good color it doesn't just have to be in the california delta or any of the warm water where you'd be like florida i would definitely fish this because you find some of those cichlids um i know gallo hooks wants me to do some uh mayan cichlids i've done a couple of those in the past but i'm going to try and work on perfecting that pattern because i know it's one of his favorites and i know it'll catch like on fire in uh, in the texas and florida areas some of them are region specific but that's okay uh, you can ask me for any patterns and uh, just as long as you understand that my turnaround time it's just me and my airbrush so there's nobody else spraying these customs except me so my turnaround time generally runs over six weeks long um, sometimes as long as three months sometimes a little bit longer depends on the other obligations that i have you know we've got a, another store that's going to be opening here uh carl's this fall so i've got some stuff that i got to do for that we're going to be coming into show season i'm going to be traveling for icast so there are certain obligations that will delay the release and the timing and, and me being able to spray. But please understand, every single order is important. All of you guys are important to me and I, I could not do this without your support and without you guys ordering my work and I am forever grateful for that. So just understand that. Sometimes I have to go travel. I have to do stuff for work that is outside of this studio this is my bread and butter this is what i've chosen to do for a living and god willing i'm going to be able to do that for quite some time and i really appreciate all of you guys' insight all of your comments uh, i get a few negative comments here and there and i can understand that some of you guys don't understand that i'm not just cranking these out and they're not painted overseas they're painted right here in georgia in the united states so they're painted in this studio they used to be painted in arkansas but just a little disclaimer it's not negative i just want to make sure that you guys understand that that's kind of where i'm coming from as far as why do my why do my orders take so long to get to me you're ordering them i do tell you i give two or three pages of disclaimer on the website on the first page on the process page on some of the inventory and stats and when i say hey this is a drop that means that they're ready to go so drops are a little bit different so the limited release stuff you should get in a relatively fast period of time. Um, this is one of the last of the brook trout. And this is something that I, I finally caught brook trout. I, I had never, it was my, one of my bucket. I have yet to catch a tiger trout or lake trout up north or a steelhead, which is they're all salmonoid species. Um, but caught my first brook and it was here in North Georgia. And they were beautiful, so I had to throw down some paint for them. Just a limited edition on that. And then uh, I think I did a little quick tutorial on Instagram on these. So that is pretty much what I've got for you guys. If you have any questions, there's a couple of ideas that I'm tossing around. A lot of you guys have asked how I'm able to make it in the business and, and how I've had some form of success. I don't even know if I can call it success because I'm still figuring it out every day. And I, maybe that sounds contrary to what you guys see, but again, conversation for another time. So I'm kicking around a few ideas for upcoming videos with you guys. If you have a burning desire to see a specific thing or have me talk about a specific topic, I don't mind putting my face in the camera. Normally when I do workshop updates, I like for you guys to see the baits and not me. Um, I think that that is more important um, than you guys just seeing me jack my jaws. So 
that's where we're at with it. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Hope your 4th of July was fabulous. Thanks for taking part in the 4th of July sale here at Jekyll Bates. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.